Hey everyone, welcome into the K0LWC Ham Shack. Today we're talking about all kinds of good Ham Shack hotline stuff. How to set up and provision your new Ham Shack hotline phone. How to program the quick keys to program extensions into your phone's memory buttons. And how to use RF links on Ham Shack hotline. All of that and a lot more coming up in this video. Before we get to that, if you haven't already, go ahead and click on subscribe and click the bell next to the subscribe button so you'll know every time I post more great ham radio content in the future. But now, we'll get that out of the way. Let's go ahead and check out how to program your new Ham Shack Hotline phone. Let's go. All right, everyone, we're gonna start from the very beginning about even the basics about what I use in my shack. Well, why do I have this PoE injector? If you don't know what a PoE injector is, uh, basically what this does is it sends power down the ethernet line as well as data. My Linksys uh, switchback here does not have PoE, so that is why I had to buy a inline PoE injector. Uh, pretty simple, I'm gonna go ahead and plug it into a power source. Uh, for this port here on the right, it does say data in. I'm gonna go ahead and plug in my ethernet cable. That's gonna bring my data from my internet router in another room. And then on this side is gonna be the ethernet cord I use to actually plug into the phone. This is gonna provide data and power together. Now they have them in there like that. I can tuck this away later, make it a little neater, a little nicer. Uh, I'm gonna take my Cisco 525G here, and I'm gonna plug this into the bottom port. Make sure you use the one labeled SW, not PC. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug this in. And what you're gonna notice is now, we have power and data coming into the phone. We're gonna let this phone boot up and keep on going down our setup. And while the phone is booting up, uh, one thing you should take note of is go ahead and grab the Mac address. So on the back of your phone, you should see something labeled Mac ID with a barcode. I'm not gonna show you my Mac ID here for security reasons, but you're gonna need that Mac ID number to send with your ticket to Hamshack Hotline. They're gonna need to know this Mac ID to get your phone ready to provision. So go ahead, find that in the back, jot it down. We'll get to that more in a second. Now that the phone is all booted up, this is a very important point to remember, folks. Your phone in the screen area will not look like this, and that's fine because you haven't provisioned yet. I'm already provisioned, but I'm just showing you how to get yours online. So just realize your phone will look like this, but not yet. So hang in there. It's gonna look different, it's fine. We wanna get into the menu system of this phone. So we're gonna go ahead and click this, looks like a piece of paper down here. Click on this button. Once we've done that, we're gonna scroll down until we get down here to number 10 where it says status. Click into there, we'll go to number two, network status. Now we're able to actually see the IP address that our home network has assigned this phone. So my internal IP address for this phone on my network is 10.0.0.41. You will need this IP address to provision your phone. So make sure you jot this number down. And with that, let's take our MAC address and our IP address go into the computer and finish this provisioning. Let's go. The very first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is take yourself to hamshackhotline.com. Uh, once there, uh, go ahead and click on HOPS Help Desk. Once we're there, we're gonna to wanna to open a new ticket. What we gotta do is tell Hamshack Hotline what that MAC address is for our device so they can add it to the network before we can actually fully provision. So go ahead and fill out this information uh, with your name, your telephone number. And if you're thinking about sending me a crazy call at three o'clock in the morning, just know that is not my real phone number. Uh, under help topic, choose new line request. In my case, I'm in the USA, so I'm gonna do HHUS. Uh, from there, I'm gonna scroll down and put in my model. For me, that's the SPA 525G. Put in my call sign. This is where you're gonna insert that MAC address that you find in the back of your phone. This also is not a real MAC address, by the way. All right, once you've imparted your MAC address, we're also gonna do city and state. In my case, I live in Maple Grove, Minnesota. I found out about it on a YouTube show, of course. Uh, also check the box for Covenant. You can link to it and read right here. Once you do that, hit create ticket. Now. Once we do this, the waiting game begins. It's gonna take about 24 to 48 hours for an admin of Hamshack Hotline to get your MAC address added so that way your phone can actually provision. You will not be able to provision, you should not attempt to provision until Hamshack Hotline gives you the okay. Uh, it'll come back in your ticket and you'll also get an email once they tell you you're good to proceed. 
Now, when I went to provision my phone, I had a little problem. I have Xfinity Comcast as my provider and I was not able to provision my phone for a solid hour and I was trying to figure out why. And it's simply because some of these new Xfinity routers have really tight security. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is log into your router and this is not just for Xfinity, this could be on Spectrum, Cox, anything else uh, out there. Log into the back of your router uh, go ahead and, and this is different methods for different routers, different companies. Mine was I just dialed in 10.0.0.1. That gets me into my router. Uh, I'm going to go to Advanced and then click DMZ. Look for DMZ. That is the demilitarized zone. So you're going to want to enable that and click Save and then go through with this next step in provisioning. What this does is it kind of eliminates some of the security layers in your router. However, very, very important. Once you do provision your phone successfully, and if you have to enable DMZ to do it, come back here and disable it. Otherwise, you're opening yourself up to tons of potential internet attacks from hackers across the world. Very important. Once we have done this, and the DMZ is now enabled, I only have one more thing that I need to do. So I'm gonna go ahead and click Save, enable my DMZ here. And now simply, remember that IP address we found for the phone? What we're going to do is I'm going to copy this URL string and you will find this down in the description below. So go look down in the description to find this and you can easily copy and paste. I'm going to go ahead and replace the X's in this address with the router IP address that, uh, excuse me, the IP address my router assigned to my phone. Remember in my case it's 10.0.0.41. That is the internal IP address of my phone. That's the only thing I'm going to replace. I'm going to go ahead and click return. And now you will see SPA will resync the profile when it is not in use and reboot. All right, once you sent the command and about five to 10 seconds later, you'll see your phone begin to reboot. And that means that it has successfully communicated with the Hamshack hotline server and things are beginning to move. Now it'll take probably about 30 to 45 seconds to reboot. Uh, once this is booted up and you actually have the screen and you can see that you have the Hamshack hotline logo and you see your call sign on top, that means everything was successful. Your screen should look identical to mine. So once that's over with, just a reminder, go back, turn off your DMZ and your router settings if you had to do that. Otherwise, again, you're opening yourself up to all kinds of interesting trouble uh, from teenagers around the world. Now, one of the things I talked about in the beginning of this video was we can show and demo doing an RF link to DMR Brandmeister. And that's exactly what we're gonna do here. Um, I'm gonna show you how this system can actually link up to RF here with my Anytone. So my Anytone is on one of the talk groups in which I know is interfaced with Hamshack Hotline. It's currently using my Pi Spot uh, hotspot. Now that we're fully booted up here, I'm gonna go ahead and show you really quickly how that works. So I'm gonna dial into that uh, hotline extension, which is 94,000. You can hear that it's identifying me as coming onto the network. All right, so you hear it on the phone. You also hear it on the radio here over the Brandmeister network. Uh, and if there's a repeater attached to this talk group, it'd be going on over RF on the repeater as well. So. Nobody else can hear you on this talk group while I'm talking. Like right now, nobody can hear me. Even if there's 20 other people in here using this RF link, nobody can hear me right now. The only way audio comes out is one way connection and you have to use a command to do it. So what I'm gonna do is turn the volume up here. It's gonna double up a little bit, but uh, again, you'll get the idea. So to talk, to key up, you press star nine nine and we're gonna use the asterisk to disconnect to unkey this connection. So here we go. Uh, K0LWC. Uh, K0LWC. So you can see I had a little bit of looping there, but it's just that simple. So star 99, I key up, asterisk when I'm done talking. So if somebody else was in here and we wanted to use this RF link, um, again, we'd have to always do that to hear one another um, while we're talking. And if somebody was out here on RF, I could have a conversation with them and they would barely, probably never even know that it was coming through on a telephone. But one of the other questions you may have is I just connect this RF link here and this you'll hear what comes across the radio. Node H H dash M A T T space K zero L W C disconnected. So 
One of the things they also want to show you is what about programming up your favorites, right? You can see I have Dan and Don and Rob and David in here. Uh, how do you actually get into programming this and what does that look like? Well, let's now take a look at that because it's probably easier than you think. So open up a new tab in your browser and use that IP address that uh, is assigned to your phone. Again, in my case, it's 10.0.0.41. Type that into your browser and go ahead and click on return. You should access the back end of your phone like this. Um, and now that you're into your phone, we're going to want to go ahead and click on admin login here in the upper right corner. And we're going to click on advanced. And now once we're into the advanced menu of the phone, it may just take a second here to come through. We're going to click on the phone tab. Once we're in the phone tab, uh, we're going to go through and see we have uh, line key one through five. These are the lines. These are the buttons on my phone. The way that I've set them up is voicemails on top. And then I have Dan, Don, Rob, and David. You can set these up with whatever you want. The only thing you've got to change are the extension numbers here to whatever you want them to be. And they could be extensions for individual phones or public bridges. Uh, public bridges are uh, usually a three number sequence. And then of course, anything after NME equals will be whatever displays in the screen. In my case, I did first name and call sign. I will give you this string and I'll put it down in the description below so you can easily copy and paste and pop this right into the back of your phone and make programming a breeze. If you haven't already, smash that like button, subscribe to my channel. Um, that's it guys, we've covered so much great stuff today. How to provision your phone, um, how to do the DMZ just to make sure it works, um, how to use an RF link over Hamshack Hotline, and how to program the buttons on the front of your Cisco phone. Uh, lots of great stuff in here. Share this with your friends, share it with your club, uh, put it in a newsletter, share this around. Let's uh, get more people on the hotline. Uh, so with that, I'll catch you again next time.